Summer's coming. It is time to talk about the powerful sun and the risks of skin cancer. I'm Dr. Brad Weenie. And I'm Dr. Paul Zalzo. And I'm Dan Walther. Okay, Dan is a plastic surgeon who has come to join us to talk all about skin cancer and ways to help modify or be aware of your risk and try to reduce your risk of getting skin cancer. We have a video that talks all about specifically skin cancer, but we're gonna talk about the risk factors right now. And there's really two big ones. So who your parents are and how you're made up and what you do and how you spend your days. So let's start with number one. Genetics. Genetics. All right, you can choose your genes, but you can't choose your genes. Yeah, kind of what he said. I got you. Right? Yeah, I got you. Okay, so what, what, is, what does genetics have to do with the risk of skin cancer? Well, there's a few factors there. Um, you t definitely take from your parents in terms of your skin tone. So if you're fair skinned, you're absolutely at higher risk of developing skin cancer just due to your cumulative sun exposure. And so that sort of uh, fits in with genetics. But there's also certain genetic conditions that can make you more likely to develop certain types of skin cancers. There's ones that can make you more likely to develop melanomas or basal cell carcinomas. And so these things are important to determine and get a good family history to make sure that you're not at risk in that re regard. Okay, so we talked about fair skin people, but even people with darker skin tones also are at risk for specific kinds of skin cancer. Yeah, and, and so that's a good thing to just to note that no one's sort of protected from skin cancer. The, the, where it shows up can be different. So if you do have darker skin tone, you gotta be careful about your palmar and your plantar surface on your foot, but also even on your nails, there's something called subungual melanoma, which might show up as a streak on the nail. So if you're looking at your hands right now and you see something like that, it might be good to see your family doctor. There you go. You just learned something. You can get skin cancer under your nails. The next big risk factor is sun. Okay, so your cumulative sun exposure. So this is not just this weekend when you're going to the beach. It's since really since you were a baby to your current moment in life. And so so what's the deal? What is the safe amount of sun? So that's a great question. It ultimately, uh, the main thing is you have to be protected when you're out in the sun. Okay. Diligent sunscreen, hats and shirts, um, that's the most important factor with sun exposure. But when we talk about sun exposure, there's two types that are related to skin cancer. Okay. There's the cumulative sun exposure, so how much you've received, and that includes from day one of life. So the most critical time of sun exposure related to skin cancers is before the age of 18. So if you're a young adult or you have kids, it's important to keep that in mind. It's too late for us, Paul. You know, yeah, you know you're, you're toast. But uh. hey, My parents would always say, son, you're killing me. I finally understand what they meant, <laughs> skin <laughs> cancer. Oh, and then the other one is, is burning or, or sunburns. So having enough exposure that you actually notice either redness and pain or bl especially blistering on the skin, well, that is an independent risk factor for melanoma. Right, so if you're a kid and you've had a burn, this sadly increases your risk of skin cancer. So you, you can't change the fact that you've already had a sunburn, what you can change is your next sunburn, hopefully avoiding your next sunburn. The best ways to avoid sun exposure are? It's so basically wear a good sunscreen. And okay. We'll, what does that mean? Yeah, we could do a whole video and probably will, sunscreen versus sunblock, you yeah. know. But yes, so high number, regular applications, Sprays, they actually say you actually have to spray multiple, it's like painting a wall, you actually have to spray more than once to actually get proper coverage compared to a lotion or a cream. Um, we can talk about details about sunscreen later on. So protective clothing, so essentially all surfaces. So this is like our ears, our noses, our arms and our legs. Reducing the amount of time that you're in the sun, as well as the time of day. So the sun at 7 in the morning and at 8.30 at night is very different than that midday peak. And some people who are really vigilant about sun protection, they should say maybe you shouldn't be out in the sun during those yeah. times or you definitely shouldn't be sunbathing at high noon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you're a kid, you're zero to six months, obviously you're not watching this video, but if you are a mom or a dad or a parent of one of these children, they really, the safe amount is zero. Yeah. You should be completely protected with clothes or with a shade over top of their um, strollers or whatever they're outside in. And someone's probably typing the question right now, what yeah. does SPF stand for? Right. Sun protection factor, right? So yep. the higher the SPF, the more protection you get. And once you put that sunscreen on, you're good for the whole day, right? No, Dr. absolutely also? not. That is the most uh, important, or certainly the most significant pitfall is uh, thinking that you're protected. Even if you're not in and out of the water, uh, that sunscreen has a life uh, on your skin and it, it really should be uh, reapplied as directed on the bottles, typically every two hours or, or even um, less, uh, depending on what your situation is. If you're by the beach, uh, or if you're wearing a lot of um, uh, different clothes, uh, that depends on how much you actually need to apply. 
a dermatologist I heard once say uh, suntan block, sunblock, sunscreen is the fountain of youth. Yeah. Oh. Yes, definitely has anti-aging as well as anti-cancer properties for sure. Exactly. We were talking a little bit off camera too, and even when you're in a car, you can get exposure to UV light. So your windows will protect you from the UVB rays, but not the UVA rays. And they talk about, you know, people like truck drivers or people that have one arm or one side of their body exposed to that all the time, have a high risk of aging on that side as well as a high risk of cancer if the window's down, interestingly. I and mean, even if it's a cloudy day, I think you can still, that's a misconception. Or if you're on water and snow, this, this, these effects are amplified, even on concrete, because the light then hits you, bounces off, and then reflects again, so you're exactly. kind of getting double the dose. Okay. So the recommendation is to avoid sun exposure. Now, that's funny because if you watch some of our other videos, and what's your take on this? We always tell people, you know, get outside, get your vitamin D, take vitamin D supplements, but now we're saying, get away from the sun, don't get any sun, you're gonna get, a, you're gonna get skin cancer. It's such a struggle there. Well, I'm certainly not one to talk about avoiding the sun at the end of the day. You know, it's too much of a good thing, but it's also doing so responsibly. So uh, the more protection you have, the more sun you can enjoy without getting those effects. But the peak sun hours is certainly some time to avoid because like you said, it can be, uh, it can get the better of you and it can result in a sunburn before you know it. So and they say for vitamin D in the peak months, particularly in Canada, where um, from May to October kind of is when we see sun, it's like 10 minutes twice a day to get your vitamin D. It's actually not very much. Um, mm -hmm. And we can talk a little bit more about that later. But yeah, a little bit of sun, yeah. always protected. Not too much of a good thing. All right, there you have it. It's summertime. We're getting close to summertime. The sun is out. We want you to be careful. We want you to get some sun, but do it responsibly, as you said, and that's avoiding the high peak sun hours wearing sunscreen, reapplying the sunscreen, and see if you can go back and change who your parents were to uh, make your genetic makeup a little better. There you go, now you're protected. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel. Dr. Waldo, thank you so much for sharing your Thanks, appreciate Adam. expertise and wisdom, and hopefully we've helped some people avoid skin cancer. You are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.